while we do have a wealth of data and we have lots of information, that most definitely is not representative of all of the customers or stakeholders. I know that the term came up that we are actually serving. So when we then build models, um, no matter how great they are, uh, you know, from a, an algorithmic sense, they are going to perpetuate the information that's in there. So uh, the, the key finding the, of the paper is um, when you build lending models, particularly for individual lending, in, in most instances, gender is actually predictive of credit worthiness. I'll touch on why in a second. So if you don't include gender in your predictive models, they are going to be more discriminatory against the minority populations than if you do. So in most instances, minority populations tend to be represented by women. There's of course lots of intersectionality there. And that's very different from things like the Fair Credit, you know, Equal Credit Opportunity Act in the US, which were based on non-model, you know, type discrimination. They, they said you shouldn't have gender. The fear was if you have gender in the same way that we had, if you had race, you might not get a loan in a certain, yes, or you could not get a mortgage in a certain area, right? Redlining or other pieces. So having lack of the data identifiers was supposed to make it more equal. Absolutely. So policy, which came up before, that was based on previous types of decision-making, human to human. Right? It was a lender, a person making that decision. Now those laws are being applied to AI and we're seeing that they're, they're paradoxically kind of irrelevant and in fact can be more harmful. So that's one. And then um, we said, why does this happen? Is because the data is not representative. And then it goes back to the, the design of policy moving forward. So policy moving forward needs to allow for the responsible, I say responsible collection of data and the diverse collection of data.